participant, which is, is my favorite. At least I get to see all the brooms, even if I can't afford one myself. Rumor has it there's an abandoned man in the bargain time. If he thinks he's getting away with this, he has another thing coming. The bells are back up, Evangeline. Oh, you're a credit to the school. I can't wait to hear them. I can't wait for the headmaster to hear them. I wish I could see his face. Future generations may not truly appreciate what you've done, but I do. And I hope that you do as well. You don't know how much this means for me and for Hogwarts. Today's lesson, we will cover a truly thrilling event. The Goblin Rebellion of 1752 and all its triumphant tragedy. But more specifically, 
we will address the devastating effects it had on the wizard milling industry. Throughout the many goblin battles, countless wizard class were lost. Actually, we do know the number. 632. But history occurs outside the classroom. And look, it's time for my constitutional. One can practically osmos the history flowing through Hogwarts. I think the professor wants us to follow him. And now for a stroll to the bell tower entrance hall. Along with the rest of the castle, it was completed in the late early Middle Ages. The hall and the bell towers that loom above it contain myriad interesting artifacts. Leave it to Bins to make the most interesting school in the world seem dull. Good to see you again. Recovered from that nasty bout of dragon pox, have we? I, uh, that wasn't me, Professor. I'm new here. Are you? Well, and, uh, welcome. No doubt you're eagerly anticipating my analysis of various wizarding councils, codes, statutes, and, of course, goblin rebellions. Not all goblins are rebellious. Some venture into wizarding politics, such as Eirgit the Ugly. Some are talented artisans, such as Bragbor the Boastful. Did you say Bragbor? I know that name. Lord Gok said he was an ancestor of Ranrock. Hmm. Well known for his metalwork. I would imagine much of his goblin wrought iron and silver has survived to this very day. Now, where were we? Oh, oh yes. <clears throat> Back to our class topic for today. Grimbold Weft. Another notable historical figure. Uh, he's right nearby. Curious students can find him on display here in the bell tower and... Revelio. Oh yes, I see you found Grimbold Weft. Yes, I rather enjoyed seeking him out. The thrill of the scholarly pursuit. I know the feeling quite well. Now, let's turn our attention to the agreeability and general good nature of Sir F. Buttle. He's also nearby. See what you can learn from him for your next assignment. Standing in eternal but symbolic watch over the bell tower is a retinue of loyal knights, or rather, Statues of knights, I should clarify. What I wouldn't give to be back on a broom right now. Spot the statue of Sir Athpuddle of the cheerful county nestled among the ranks. Abandoning class to wander the halls is in keeping with Professor Binz's manner of teaching. Combat, nor by slaying bloodthirsty dragons. Revelio. Rather in training yards and scullery. Where his warm and approachable demeanor was Why celebrated by old is friends well, and newcomers. A bit alike. different than that of Hogwarts. I to say the least. One to make the waving statue's acquaintance. Sir Afpuddle. Revelio. As one would expect, Hogwarts contains no narthexes, since obviously those would not be found in castles. 
Sir Scagglethorpe the Heedless once challenged a mountain troll to a game of musical chairs. Care to guess who won? If you fail history of magic, you're doomed to repeat it. The, the class, that is. Revelio. I've seen and often complain about the many staircases at Hogwarts. They never bother me. This unassuming smudge is rumored to be the location of the very first successful use of Bombardier. I suppose successful is a delicate term, since whoever can't get it never helped it. Hogwarts is impervious to the inexorable march of time. Revelio! Perhaps that is why I admire it so. the centuries that Hogwarts has existed, not once has it collapsed. The Hogwarts founders could never have achieved such architectural majesty without the aid of powerful magic. Professor Binns, I found the statue of Sir Athpuddle. Ah, well done. Alas, Sir Athpuddle's affability was his undoing died instantly trying to befriend a basilisk. Eye contact is not always to be encouraged. So beloved was he that even some goblins mourned his passing. Of course, that did not bode well with the rest of the goblins, most of whom could not abide mourning the loss of a wizard. Pity goblins and wizards can't get along. True. But imagine how dull my lectures would be without goblin rebellions to discuss. Mm. History does tend to repeat. It is a series of patterns, a thought both comforting and disconcerting. The wise student, such as yourself, will learn from it. History is written by those who do their schoolwork, so they say. Or at least, I like to say that. Looks like we've all got in another one of Binks' wild creatures.
Captain, but would you mind helping out an old woman? Is everything all right? Oh, bless you. Oh, thank you for asking. I'm Betty, Betty Bugbrook, and no, everything is not all right. It's my dear friend Hazel. Oh, she's in trouble. Hazel? Yes. Oh, she's a unicorn. Known her for years. She doesn't like to leave the forest, so I visit her once a week to brush out her mane and bring her some treats. Her coat is glorious. Well, the last time I saw her, we were violently attacked by a pack of wolves. Hazel, loyal friend that she is, leapt in front to protect me, and in the process, I fear she may have been injured. I'm sorry to hear that. I want to help her, but she seems to have gone into hiding. Out of fear, I'd imagine. I know you Hogwarts students learn a fair bit about caring for beasts. Perhaps you could find my unicorn friend and get her somewhere safe so that she can heal. How did you become so close with the unicorn? It was luck, truly. I came across her when she was a little golden foal. Didn't even have a horn yet. Oh, she just me straight away. We'd play together for hours. Oh, I do hope she'll be all right. Unicorn hair is a valuable wand core, and I suppose losing a hair or two mightn't hurt her. But I'm terrified those poachers will want her for her blood to keep themselves alive. And that is more than I can bear to think of. I'll keep an eye out for your unicorn friend and take her to safety if I see her. Oh, you've a good soul. I can always tell. Please, don't risk your own safety, though. I don't know precisely where she is, but I can tell you that her den is north of Hogsmeade. And although I haven't been able to brush her lately, I imagine she still has the brightest, most beautiful coat of her entire herd. Remember, you'll know her by her brilliant coat. Oh, and be warned, she's a stubborn girl. I need to look for a unicorn with a beautifully bright coat. It sounds as if she's in trouble. Plenty for your perusal today. Take your time. I'd say that looks as if it was made for you. I don't know how you and Miss Oni did it, but we're all highly pleased to be rid of Theophilus Harlow. I'd say that looks as if it was made for you. You won't be disappointed. That's a Gladrax promise. I'd say that looks as if it was made for you. You won't be disappointed. That's a Gladrax promise. I'd say that looks as if it was made for you. I'd say that looks as if it was made for you. I'd say that looks as if it was made for you. I suspect you have a sharp eye for fashion. Be sure to stop by whenever you're about.
Ah, up at Hogsfield. Now where to find Mrs. Sprottle? <laughs>